to join me in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> We are going to uh, start today with a uh, presentation with um, Mark Kalitri in the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Mark, uh, yes, thank you. come on up to the podium and tell us uh, about what's going on in the county here through your office. It's been a great start to the year already. Just a few weeks ago, we were recognized by the Chamber of Commerce for the uh, Small Business Innovative Business of the Year Award. So that was a nice honor to have earned. And uh, it wouldn't have been possible without the support of our board of directors and, of course, the, the support of the county commissioners and a great many folks in our business community. So thank the Chamber of Commerce for recognize, recognizing us there. Uh, I'd like to go through a small PowerPoint, and then I'd like to bring up Sarah Gleason from our office to talk about our new visitor's guide that we've launched for the first time uh, in a great many years. And also, I have a special guest, Dave McIver from King's Hammer Soccer. Uh, I'd like to say a few words and tell us about what's going on there. To start off, uh, we were honored to speak at this past year's uh, U.S. Rowing Conference. And the quote that came out from the U.S. Rowing folks, uh, the success of the 2016 Club Nationals Regatta was tremendous. The effort put forth by the Claremont County Convention and Visitors Bureau the local volunteers and all involved in running this event are what made the regatta enjoyable for the athletes and spectators alike. And here's the most important part. Claremont County has raised the bar for how U.S. rowing runs events and we look forward to returning to Lake Harsha next year. And that's really important because the reason for that is because of our business community, our volunteers are supporting us. It takes over 400 volunteers all throughout that week. So that's a very crucial event. And uh, we're starting to establish ourselves in how we do that. The race is coming back this year. It begins on July 12th for five days. Over 1,800 athletes and all their coaches and families. And one of the most important things about this event is they have a college fair now on the last day. A hundred colleges from across the country are coming in here to recruit these kids. So they're all staying in hotel rooms as well, buying gas, eating. Staying at, uh, not B&B, but the uh, Airbnb. Uh, Airbnbs, a lot of Airbnbs are starting to uh, become more and more popular in Claremont County. A lot of small business folks are renting out their extra houses and extra rental properties. So there's some extra things that we can't even track sometimes of where the folks are staying. A couple of other things we're excited to announce. On the left, with the partnership of the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the local Southern Ohio Trail Association, we've, we've partnered with several groups and brought them together. We've completely revitalized 36 miles of the outer perimeter at East Fork for the equestrian trails. And so the goal was that, for that was to create opportunities to attract events and visitors. And so we met with local folks and we've created a fun uh, event called the Twisted Witch endurance ride and that's going to be held in October we're already expecting upwards of 250 equestrian folks to come into town and that's going to be an exciting event and the goal we're trying to do is starting to build these events start off small and just keep continuing to grow so excited about that in the top right corner we have submitted our bid for the world's largest geocaching event in 2018 we're a finalist now it's down to uh, us and uh, some location on the west coast that we don't know so that's a huge event because we can control where we put these caches. We can put those in New Richmond. We can put one in the back of scene 75 in Miami Township, put that in downtown Milford. We can control where those people go and part of their experience, and, and that's important. And then on the bottom, we have won the bid for the 2018 Airstream Convention held at the fairgrounds. And that's an important event because that's uh, going to give uh, $8,000 of revenue straight to the fairgrounds. And the folks that are involved in this organization are citizens with seniority that have uh, expendable income. So they're going to be here to spend money and they're going to do all kinds of activities within the county. And then, of course, they're going to pull that trailer with a nice uh, gas guzzling 
sport utility or truck. So lots of gas, lots of money to be spent. So we're excited about that. Mark, I heard yesterday that Airstream is actually based in Ohio. I didn't know that until just we recently. Just, just yeah. found out that tidbit. So now we can go back and we're going to start digging in on that and try to capitalize on that, knowing that that's a, a, a regionally manufactured product. We're continuing to grow the events that use the natural resources here in Claremont County. We have the Beast of the East at East Fork. It's a one of the Tough Mudders where you're crawling on the ground, jumping over obstacles, running on the beach. And that event started off very small a few years ago and has grown significantly. And so we're continuing to work on that growth. On the right side, we're working on some cyclocross events that are held at the uh, Valley View Foundation and some at East Fork. And that bicycling sports um, a year-long events that we can host as well. So we're going to continue to use the natural assets that we have to our advantage. And lastly, we have all kinds of hotel data that's many, many pages, but I summarized this on one page for you. And the one thing that we can control and is uh, at the CVB is what's called REVPAR. That's the revenue per available room, and that's what equalizes all hotels throughout the United States. You can measure every hotel, every market by that one figure. And you can tell here, uh, Butler County had a growth rate of 3.6. We're at 4.7. Hamilton County, 3.8. Warren County, 0.1% growth. Cincinnati North, 2.9%. And I'll remind you, last year we led the whole region in growth at over 10%. So things are continuing to move forward. Northern Kentucky is the one anomaly. They've always been in the middle of the pack the last eight or 10 years, or even below the pack. And of course, they led everything at 7.2%. And you've started researching why, and it's because of Noah's Ark. The one Ark exhibit that they had brought that many, it, it changed the market for them. So that's kind of re-energized our board, thinking that you know if we continue this product development, continue the soccer development, continue the baseball development, continue building that demand, you can see what happens, uh, think good things happen. And I will mention that we've started working with Noah's Ark. A lot of folks are saying, hey, that's in uh, you know, northern Kentucky, but we're already seeing a considerable amount of guests coming through. We're in the center of everything right here. If you want to go to Kings Island, a Reds game, Noah's Ark, it's all right here. And the Holiday Inn just this past week has landed a, a tremendous piece of business. The group's going to be coming in almost every single day of the week, bringing bus groups in. So good things are happening there, and uh, the numbers don't lie. It's right there. We're still continuing to compete very well in our market. And with that, I'd like to bring up Sarah and talk about this brand new visitor's guide that we had. Pass them out. Like Mark mentioned, this is the first time we've had a visitor guide um, in quite some time. We, um, when starting the visitor guide, we wanted to ask the community what they wanted to see in it. So before I even started the design process, we went to every community, we went to um, township administrators, we went to all the chambers, what did they want to see in the visitor guide, what content should be in there. So a lot of the content in this guide is coming straight from the community. We wanted to put something in there that they wanted to see. Um, you'll see in the guide there's maps, That's, that was the number one uh, request from hotels. The visitor wants to see where they're at from a map standpoint. So every uh, topic has a map on there. And then the boxes I also wanted to point out. So when highlighting specific topics or specific products, we, we uh, base the majority of them based upon TripAdvisor. So we let the visitor and we let the, um, the consumer tell us what is the best one. And, um, and then we highlighted them there. The, the content in each block is coming from uh, the location. So for Jungle Gems or Scene 75 on just those first pages, I called them. What did they want to see? What did they want to talk about? They know Scene 75 better than I do. So we let them put the content in there. So that's coming directly from them. So if you have any questions, if you'd like more copies, I certainly have them. Uh, we're actually, we've had a really good response from the community. We have to get more printed already. So. If, if um, you want any more, just let me know, and I'll get to Sarah, you. is any of this online? If you're yeah, it's in a digital format. Um, you can find it online. It's mobile friendly as well. You can download it through, uh, through our website.
And finally, we began uh, a few years ago with uh, the development at the Red Barn, and the key aspect to that development was our relationship with King's Hammer Soccer Program. And I've, I've invited the Executive Director and Business Development Manager, uh, Dave McIver, to come tell you a few words about what's going on this year and some of their successes and some of the growth. Thanks, Mark. Um, good morning. And uh, first of all, I just want to say on behalf of King's Hammer Soccer Club, thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity to come and speak. And more importantly, thank you for the opportunity to um, have a facility out here in Claremont County and Batavia where we can continue to grow our events and our business. Um, just a little background about King's Hammer Soccer Club. We started back in 2013 when King Soccer Academy out of Northern Kentucky and Hammer FC out of the Anderson Township area decided to come together to merge their soccer clubs. So um, currently we are a 501c3 Ohio not-for-profit business and we currently have about 1,800 youth athletes within the club. Each year we see the number of athletes from this area continue to grow within our club so it's very important and we're very thankful to have a presence out here because it helps us to continue to grow and develop. Um, with that, one, a big component of our club is the ability to run and host soccer events. So currently we host seven club run events throughout the calendar year. Three of those events are held out here in Batavia currently. Um, we also host every June, we started last year, hosting a, a youth soccer camp that's sponsored by FC Barcelona, one of the best soccer clubs in the world out of Spain. And they bring in anywhere from 300 to 400 campers a year. And so last year was our first year out at the new complex in Batavia. And this year we expect that number to grow in the number of participants. Um, the three events that we will host this year alone in 2017 are estimated to bring in around 18,000 participants to the Batavia and Claremont County area. So for us, having a first class facility to be able to host these events um, means that we can continue to grow. And obviously if we can continue to grow and build these events, there's a greater economic impact for this area as well. Just an example of the economic impact, in um, October of 2016, we hosted our Blue Chip Invitational Tournament out here over two weekends, and we hosted 162 teams. All right, this, that's the third year for this event, so it's still relatively new. That event over two weekends brought in an estimated $1.2 million of economic impact to this community. Um, in April, uh, coming up in a few short months, we're getting ready to host um, one of the biggest college showcase events in, in the entire United States, which is our Blue Chip Showcase. So this year we'll bring in nearly 500 teams and over 500 college coaches over two weekends from across the U.S. and Canada. So obviously the economic impact is going to be much greater than $1.2 million. Um, but the most important thing for us as a club is that we have a place to call home. And so we're very appreciative and we're very thankful for the opportunity to be out here um, in Batavia and Claremont County. And by us being able to host events out here, it's continuing to grow the sport of soccer, not only in this area, but also to grow the number of players that are now coming to our club from this area. Uh, in the near future, we're hopeful that we can start to now attract state championship events, regional championship events, and then further down the road, national championship events to this quality facility. Uh, one other thing that, that we're in the final stages right now of um, developing a partnership with UC Claremont, and their I've been meeting with their athletic director, Brian Sullivan, to provide a home for their men's and women's soccer teams to finally have their home facility and have that out in Batavia. So I just want to take a couple minutes to say thank you. Um, we're very appreciative for being out here. We look forward to continue to grow our relationship with Claremont County and the community. And I also want to thank Mark and his staff just for embracing us and, and helping us to continue to grow.
When you have like 500 teams or coaches coming in for two weekends, do you bring in food trucks? And I mean, how does how does the facility compare here? And how do you accommodate that many people? So the different events do different things. Um, our, our current agreement with the facility owners is that they handle all of the food. Um, so they, they've brought in food trucks, they've brought in, um, they've had their own little concession stand out there. Um, Good. Yeah. How, how about the fields? I know we're second year into, and I just this past year they added irrigation. Do we have pretty good fields now or we're, getting better? They are getting better. Um, we've, we've put a lot of time and money um, into those fields. And our, our goal is typically we want to see the fields where we want them within year three. And so we're in year two and they're already looking much better. Um, I think obviously this weather has helped and, and the rain that we're getting, not the storms, but, um, but now we have the irrigation, which is a key, a key component. How many so. fields are irrigated? All 13. Wow. Yeah. So. Great. Well, thanks for coming out. Thank you very much. Nice job on your team. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Is that it, Mark? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, here we are in the regular session of March 1st. We have in front of us the consent agenda. And um, if there's any items that need to be removed uh, for further discussion uh, or consideration, please let me know at this point. Otherwise, I'll in entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Ubel? Yes. All right, uh, going to page three, the non-consent agenda, item nine. First motion is to resolution 27-17 to pay our bills in the amount of $1,913,115.47. Can I get a motion for item nine? So moved. Second. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Ubel? Yes. And item 10. Item 10 is a recommendation of Pat Marger, County Engineer, with my concurrence. To execute record plat number 629-2993 for the following subdivision located within Union Township and execute performance and maintenance bonds as well as performance bonds for sidewalks as surety. The subdivision is Terrace Ridge Subdivision Section 6 in Union Township. All right, can we get a motion to execute record plat 629-2993 for the Terrace Ridge Subdivision as referenced in the table in item 10? So moved. Second. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Yes. <coughs> Ms. Suki. Good morning. I'm Suki Sheets with the Office Management and Budget. Item 11 is a recommendation to approve the request of Dan Otke, the superintendent of the Claremont County Board of Developmental Disabilities. This is for an advance from the first half 2016 property tax proceeds for the uh, Board of Developmental Disabilities Fund, which will be distributed according to the availability and in order to meet the current operating expenses relative to the continuing care of individuals with developmental disabilities. A couple of weeks ago we did this for DJFS for the CPS levy. Uh, DD also needs it to make sure that they get through before the settlement goes out. Thank you. We get a motion to approve the request of Dan Opke, the superintendent of the Claremont County Board of Developmental Disabilities for an advance from the first half of 2016 real property taxes for the Board of Developmental Disabilities as referenced in item 11. Uh, so moved. Second. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Ubel. Yes. And we have, thanks Suki. And we have need for executive session uh, pursuant to 121.22 G1 and G3 of the Ohio Revised Code. First to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion compensation or one or more public of one or more public employees or secondly to confer with the prosecuting attorney regarding pending or imminent litigation respectively can i get a motion to go into executive session so moved second mr painter yes mr humphrey aye mr Ubel. yes okay we will be back shortly we are back from the executive executive session uh, there was no decisions made or votes taken, um, and I believe we have an add-on, correct, uh, Mr. Ribble? The uh, personnel action add-on. It's for the Department of Job and Family Services. Deborah Riley, Investigator 3, 
This is for administrative leave, which is non-disciplinary with pay, effective 228-2017. Okay. Can uh, we get a motion as such? So moved. Second. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Hubel. Yes. And if that's it, um, let's take a recess while the minutes are prepared. All right, we are uh, back from a uh, recess as the minutes were prepared, which we now have in front of us. And um, when you two gentlemen have had a chance to review them, I will entertain a motion to accept the minutes from March 1st of 2017. Make a motion we approve the minutes of 2000 of uh, March 1st. March 1st. Spring is here. Spring is here. I made the motion. I know you did. Yep. So I'm waiting for a second. David. Second. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Hubel. Yes. And an inner, let's get a motion then to adjourn the meeting. I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting of March the 1st, 2017. Second. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Hubel. Yes. That's it. Thanks for coming. Okay.